Pastor, for our discussion tonight, you have been in the forefront of the spiritual war, Pastor, and the forces of darkness and carnality are fighting tooth and nail to defeat our spirituality. However, you have already declared victory over Satan, Lucifer, the devil. Now, Pastor, what does this signify? And has the time already come for Satan's downfall, Pastor? Very nice topic to discuss as our man of revelation tonight, Nori. But before that, I would like to greet all the children, sons and daughters of the Father Almighty, of the Kingdom Nation, all the KLCs scattered all around the world uh, for joining me tonight. The Father's blessings be upon all of you. Uh, I am so thankful that uh, in the last uh, few programs that I have on Give Us This Day and on Powerline, we have discussed about the, the ultimate uh, things that must be done in the spirit in order for us to finish with uh, faithfulness, therefore uh, receiving a crown of righteousness and eternal life. Now, in this ministry of the appointed son, I have already laid down the, uh, the uh, storyline of salvation and in coming in how a man must become uh, a member of the uh, spiritual family of the Almighty Father and this is a spiritual family that uh, he has uh, produced so that you can come and become a part of that covenant, the covenant uh, that says, uh, you know, the New Testament, the new covenant, the new agreement that this will finally must be done here on earth. Now, uh, we must be saved, and, uh, and you know that from the beginning why we were lost uh, in the deception. I have spoken that, preached that, Bible study that for so many, many years. And this is the message that uh, has been reverberating all over the world. And it only will resonate in the minds and spirit of those who truly wanted to come into the kingdom and be saved. Foremost in this ministry is the salvation of the soul. The salvation of the soul. So many who have come in were mistaken in their notion that being a member physically of the kingdom is enough. Like, you know, to be a physical member, you can come, apply, uh, fill up an application for candidates for baptism, and you receive my message, you repent by saying those words meaningfully. Or sometimes those people who come don't understand the meaning of, from now on, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Then there are seminars, orientations of uh, about 28 or 30 lessons that you must undergo to see uh, that you have enough knowledge and understanding of what uh, basically is the Father's will. And, uh, and then after that, uh, if there are any questions, you may question, you may ask questions, you may you may, uh, uh, anything you don't understand, you may ask those who are teaching you. But after that, when everything is okay, there will be a schedule of baptism to go into the body of water like in the ocean or the sea. And the candidates for baptism, as you may see, we have been doing that all the time, will uh, all be lined up by districts and then ministers will come and uh, will baptize you in water. Uh, and we welcome you into the spiritual family of the Almighty Father. For the churches, that is the finish line. For us in the kingdom, nation, that's only the beginning. That is only the start. And so you will be taught to walk after water baptism, baptism of water. After that, you must be taught to walk into the newness of life. 
according to Romans chapter 6. And that is where many of the people who came, who are called to be baptized, have a mistaken notion that that is already a license for them to go to heaven because they are now members of the kingdom and Pastor Apollo Shikiboloi, the appointed son of God, is their pastor. They now, they now have the right to call me their pastor. That is where the mistaken notion is going to be a deception for all of those who think like that. Because that is not so. When you're baptized in water, you came, that is only the beginning. You are only a physical member. You have to go through the baptism of fire to refine you, to burn all the things that are not needed. To go through that fire, that is when you begin to follow the Father's will that are going to be fed to you through none of revelations, through seminars, and through studying the word of the Almighty Father, which at most of the time, and uh, people who come uh, in clusters would have seminars, lessons, and this will be taught to them. So you go through the baptism of fire. That is when uh, all the things that are not needed in you must be refined. Because you are a work in progress now. Baptism of water is very easy. It comes very easily. We just ride the bus, go with uh, the candidates for baptism, immerse you in water. It's the easiest part. But that is only the initiation. And many others have uh, been mistaken in their thought that they are now licensed members of the kingdom nation under Pastor Apollo Siki Boloi. So therefore, they think that is all that they do to be saved, and they are now with us. And most of all, those that have been baptized uh, would decide to become full-time miracle workers. You know, in the true essence of being a full-time miracle worker. We cannot accept you as a full-time miracle worker if you are not a son or a daughter of the Father Almighty who have gone through the third level of spiritual growth. And those are the only ones that can be qualified to become full-time miracle workers. Because if you go through the third level of spiritual growth and you've been adopted as sons and daughters, there is no more backsliding there. Because you've been through all. The fire will be your correction, your discipline. Sometimes the correction will be severe. The correction, the discipline, the instruction, the, uh, the advices, uh, the uh, teachings that you must undergo. And I've observed that most Filipinos, they are very uh, weak in discipline because we've been through many, uh, our nation have been through many traumatic times of uh, conquests by Spaniards, by Japanese, by uh, Americans, that we feel we are always the victim. So that's why we don't understand. Because we are not people of privilege. As a third world country, we have been underprivileged, always being con uh, conquered by a foreign power. So we, 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 we have this mentality that uh, there is always a master above us, and we are always the ruled over, and there are ruler over us. So that we are always, you know, subjected to that kind of a feeling that when you're corrected, the servant and the master relationship that we have been through always kicks in, you know. The master always rules over you, always do this or do that. So your feeling is, how can I be free from this? How can I, uh, how can I, how can I, uh, 
liberate myself from all of this. That is always the feeling. So we always feel victimized whenever somebody rules over us. But in, in the kingdom nation, you must have to understand that when you become a member because by the virtue of your water baptism, you entered into the covenant, you will be under tutors and governors as a child. So uh, somebody asked me and said, uh, how do I know that I am still a child pastor and how do I know when I am already a son? Because as a child, Galatians chapter 4 tells us as a child, you don't differ from a servant. That's why those who came here and are treated as children because they don't have knowledge and understanding of the Father's will yet. They, are, they feel like servants. And some, they feel like they are slaves. Uh, in the kingdom nation, the uh, definition of slavery is you're an unbeliever. You don't know anything about God. You are not repented. You are only doing your own will. That is why you are a slave of Satan, Lucifer, the devil's serpent seed of doing your own will. You are under sin. Now, when you are baptized, you are still a child. That's why you are under tutors and governors. You don't differ from a servant because you are under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Now, let me explain that, brothers and sisters. Don't, don't, uh, uh, don't uh, fail to listen to this. When you are under tutors and governors, I will answer the questions that I've received. How do I know that I am still a child under tutors and governors? When somebody keeps on correcting you, when somebody keeps on teaching you, when somebody needs on disciplining you, when somebody keeps on refining you and your character, you are still under tutor and governor. Tutors and governors. You are not yet graduated. You have not reached that level where you can be the teacher to others because you have no more weakness that has remained in yourself. And those refinement of our characteristics and our, uh, and our uh, attitude and our, uh, our, uh, our uh, aura of spirituality will be through the fire. And the fire are corrections, temptations. On the side of God, the fire are corrections. They are necessary. They are, uh, they are uh, corrective and they are disciplinary. It is not for your destruction, it is for you. So that is the positive side of the fire. Discipline, correction, uh, instructions, and many more. This is the positive side of the fire. So you must understand that this is for your benefit. So you can go and push through to the third level of spiritual growth from being unaccountable. The negative side of the fire are coming from the enemy. That is your temptations. That is your uh, persecutions. That is your everything that comes from the side of the enemy that tries to weaken your faith is the negative side of the fire. The positive side of the fire is to strengthen you, is to make you and mold you to become like your almighty father through his appointed son. Why do I know how to say this? Because I was the first one who have undergone all of this. That's why the word of God is complete. It's complete. And many of those who came into the kingdom misunderstood those things. And as I told you, the Filipino mentality of always liking itself or himself or herself as a victim when correction would come, when discipline would come, 
instructions would come, they would resent that. But that is the wrong. Uh, that is the wrong reaction. Do not resent discipline, correction, instruction, and uh, sometimes it's more than that. It's similar. Like we will be reading uh, just a while in just a while uh, Hebrews chapter twelve. You know, you undergo through that for the benefit of your soul. You are being uh, refined. You are being molded to become uh, a real child of God into the characteristics, divine characteristics of your almighty father. But that is where the, the cut is. Because if our mentality is always like a conquered nation or a conquered people who always looks at those who discipline us or we look at those who teach us or corrects us as our masters and we are always the conquered ones. We are the, we are the, uh, the uh, victims of this. Then resentment would come. That is the wrong reaction. Resentment and how to free myself from all of this, that is the wrong direction and that is the wrong reaction. What is the right reaction? when you understand coming into the kingdom nation and becoming a real son and daughter of the Almighty Father. Accept those with a humble heart that this is for your benefit because you are not perfect when you came into the kingdom. After your baptism, you are, you are not perfect. You are very, very raw. There are many, many things yet that will be refined in you, that will be molded according to the image of the one who has called us. So there will be many instructions, many corrections, many disciplines, many, many things that will be done to polish you. How can a diamond be very, very uh, valuable, be very, very valuable from the raw material of being just a stone, you know, you will bring that to the master that would refine it. And if you can see how a diamond is grind, grounded to perfection, if you are that diamond, you'll be shouting for help because it is, uh, it is uh, an equivalent to the diamond that is used by the master to grind you to perfect you because a diamond is a very hard stone and uh, it can only be grounded by uh, a similar stone like a diamond that will be in the hands of the master for grinding it so that uh, it will be perfected according to the design of the master in his hands. So you can use it, you can display it and you can say, this is precious, this is valuable, this is so expensive. But it must pass through that. So the grinding will be the correction, will be the discipline, will be the uh, instructions, the everything that goes with that so that you may be perfected in your spirit and to be displayed. So this is what many other people who came into the kingdom did not understand. And no one is exempted from that. So we go through that. The church age people did not teach us that. You can only hear that here. You don't hear these teachings in the church age people. To them, it's always a shortcut. You be baptized, you're a member of our denomination, bravo, you come. And so that many have become members of that kind because, you know, there is no touching of the pride. There is no touching of the lust of the flesh. There is no touching of the lust of the eyes. You can go there as long as your name is our, in our membership role. You are a member of our denomination. We recognize you. 
And you, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're okay. As long as you have been baptized in our congregation, you're okay. You can go on. You are already a member. No teachings like this. It's only to the appointed son that all of these were entrusted. That's why I'm teaching you right now all of these uh, uh, things that can be found in the word of God. So you go through that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 10 to 15 says that. All of it. You go through the fire. Every man's work shall be made manifest so as, so, so as by fire. Of what sort it is. So we'll be grounded. And that is where uh, I've seen that many of our brothers and sisters who have been called when it comes to that grinding, when it comes to the refining, when it comes to the uh, baptism of fire, misunderstood. That when you correct them or that when you discipline them, they think that you are hurting them. You know what we are surrendering here are three things that are the... That are the... Uh, the... Uh, ingredients of the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Pride of life is uh, one of the things that made Lucifer fall. That is false pride. And that is where we are very weak sometimes because when it comes to that, then we resent the discipline, we resent the correction. When you do that, you cannot be perfected. When you do that, you remain as a servant forever. When you do that, you always need correcting. You, you always perpetually need correcting for 20 years. You did not go and graduated from being a servant. You did not go to the third level of spiritual growth into becoming a son and a daughter of the father where there should be no more tutors and governors to teach you, to tell you, this is not right. That is not right. Because you will be filled with knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. And that is why, that is where the full-time workers should come from. And they will be the one to teach others to become tutors and governors of others who may be coming in and will undergo the same process as you have undergone. Because you cannot give to others what you don't have. You know, if I have tuberculosis and I will teach you, if I have COVID-19 and I am allowed to teach you, what will I give you? I won't give you a health certificate and say, uh, you know, you're healthy. What I can give you is what I have. What can I give you? COVID-19. But if I'm healthy, I can teach you how to become healthy. I can teach you the healthy tips of being healthy. I can teach you that because that is what I have for you. I am a doctor of the spirit and I can teach you what are the things that may kill your spiritual life. That is where we are. That is why in our battle between spirituality and carnality, this is what we are trying to decimate the carnality that is left in us after the fall and we have inherited what Satan, Lucifer, the devil gave our first parents that we have inherited even in our generation today, generation of humanity, including us. And we are so thankful that the Father has delivered this message unto the appointed son. And you did not hear this from those who are in the churches. When you enter in, you become a family, spiritual family of the father, you are treated as a child. And as a child, you'll be under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. When is the time appointed of the father? In my case, it's five years, six years in two mountains. But in the case of other people, <laughs> sometimes it takes them nine years and they are still a child. Six years, they are still a child. 20 years, they are still a child because they refuse to be corrected because their minds always remains like a victim, always 
looking up at those who teach them as masters. And how can I get out from this? How can I liberate myself from this? Do not liberate yourself from the positive fire. You have to go through it. Thank God for teachers. Thank God for correctors. Thank God for those who correct you. Thank God for those who discipline you. That is where the Filipino mind is very weak. Because they resent discipline. That's the positive. That is the, uh, the uh, constructive criticisms are good. Correction is good. I have learned that when I was uh, living with my sister and there was no resentment in my, my life because every wrong that I have, I would, give a, I would receive a correction that is severe. You did not even undergo that. Oh, the first batch of workers that were with me, you asked them, Ingrid, Ting, Nening, and, and many of them, even Brother Inting, you asked them, how they were molded, the how they were severely corrected in order to become like what they are now as administrators. Because every talent we have, everything we have, that is secondary. That's nothing if you have not undergone this process and you were not declared as a son and a daughter because you are still under correction. You, got, you have to go through that level where you become spiritually matured and you have undergone all of this, burn all of your weaknesses, burn the lust of the flesh, burn the lust of the eyes, burn the pride of life. All of this is gone. And now you partake of the heavenly character of your heavenly father. Let's look at uh, uh, Galatians. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, when you are baptized, you are already considered an heir here in the kingdom. You entered in, you are born again in the spirit of obedience to the Father's will. But the first step is being born in water. You don't differ nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. Why? Because you are a child, you differ nothing from a servant, though you be Lord of all. Why did he say, though you be Lord of all? You be Lord of all because he is looking at the third level where you will go to finish it and then be declared as adopted sons and daughters. You will be Lord of all because you will inherit everything your father has, just like me. First year in Tamayong, I was a child. I don't differ from a servant. That's why I have to stay there for five years. And it was an open-ended season for me because he did not say, stay there for five years. Stay here as long as I want you to stay here. I receive, why, why, why do I have, that is my classroom. I have to receive instructions every day. I cannot go out every day, every day. You learn it every day. And then the negative side of uh, the fire is the persecution, but it becomes positive in my side because I learn obedience. I learn humility. When somebody persecutes me, not only with words, but physically abuse me, you know? The laws in my heart that must be written is, love your enemy. Do good to them that hate you. My other members are just looking at me when I roll to the ground because somebody hit me in the head, hit me in the body, and then I roll on the ground, you know? My members there who are looking at me like St. Peter, when he was not yet really fully uh, <laughs> uh, an apostle, took his sword and uh, cut off the ear of one of the soldiers that were about to arrest Jesus Christ. My members were only looking at my signal for them to really do what I will tell them to do. If I say, kill this guy who is doing this to me, they will. But I will fail. Or if I have been offended, and then I say, no more. I failed. I, I will not become a, an appointed son. But the rule I have are specific. Love your enemy. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. 
pray for them that persecute you and despitefully use you. That is my specific instructions. So I would go up and then do all of these things. I do not resent my enemy who did that to me. Uh, I did not curse him. Uh, whenever he is hungry and he needs food, we give him food. Because I have to follow that. Now in the kingdom nation, when you come, what is one of the command? Love one another. When you are a child under instruction, under correction, under discipline, you're still a child. I don't know if you murmur in secret, you complain in secret, but you have no right to do that when you are under tutors and governors. How many of you have been in school? When the teacher teaches you something like this, and then there was an examination, your only right is to obey and to do what the teacher is saying, because you are still under tutor and governors. Your only right is to obey. When you reach the third level of growth, and you are declared a son and daughter, you are now engaged in the father's spiritual business. Your right is to teach, is to lead, is to guide, edify others into molding them into the image of the Almighty Father through the appointed Son. That is your right. But as children under tutors and governors, your only right is to obey. You don't have the right to complain. You don't have the right to murmur. You can do that maybe in private, but that will not help you spiritually if you do that. So I am correcting this because many uh, in the kingdom nation who have been workers uh, who are not here anymore, I am reviewing all the things that made them backslide or made them draw back. It is correction, discipline, reproof, edification. They mistake in it because they are slaves in their minds and, you know, servants in their minds and the rulers. They resent that because of the pride of life that is left in them. They did not like that. They did not submit themselves to that. That is why they decided to draw back. And they did not finish the course. It's only the beginning of the, bit, the baptism of fire. That if you have to go through that, you reach the other side of the finishing line as sons and daughters to be able to inherit all that the Father has declared as adopted sons and daughters and now are able to teach others what they have undergone. How can you teach humility when you yourself are not humble? How can you teach to burn the pride of life when you yourself have not been burned by your pride of life? How can you teach others of the lusts of the flesh or of the lust of the eyes when you yourself have not undergone that? How can you teach others to overcome those things in the world when you yourself have not undergone that? And if you did not go through that, then you will suffer loss. First Corinthians chapter 3, 10 to 15 says, every man's work shall be rebuilt, so as by fire. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be rebuilt by fire. And the fire shall declare, shall, shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So those who drew back, they got offended because there was resentment in their hearts. They did not understand the correction and the discipline. They misunderstood it. Their reaction was wrong. Their reaction was wrong. They resented it. Do not resent it. Do not despise the correction. Do not despise because that will give you wisdom. Because when you enter into the kingdom, you are not perfect. 
There is only one here that has been perfected to teach you and to be the standard and model of salvation. That is the appointed son. So you are set up against me, against the standard that the father has already laid down that is the appointed son. What did I do in my baptism of fire? I humbled myself. I did not resent it. I did not despise it. I went under it. That is why I am here today to teach all of you. Mm. But if I remain like a servant in my mind and say, you know, you play a victim and then, you know, I have the right to fight against you. I have the right to, to, to also uh, tell you. I did not do that. I went through it. I'm saying this because I will be reviewing in the kingdom nation right now after this uh, year 2020. Uh, as I told you, I don't have to prove myself to anyone. All that come here must prove themselves that they are serious, that they will finish, that they will undergo this baptism of fire. No exemption, not one is exempted. I was not even exempted to be able to do that and go into the narrow, into the makipot na pinto and into the makitid na daan where few have made it. I want you to all, I want all of you to succeed. That's why the, uh, the extended uh, compassion of the Almighty Father throughout all of those years is that after baptism, those that decided to become full-time workers were accepted, which is not so. So we accepted them here, become full-time workers, and they did undergo their baptism of fire here. And the fire here is very, very uh, intense, especially if you are with me. Very, very intense. That's why many have been burned because they did not understand the correction, the discipline, the reproof. But if they only understood it, it will be a double blessing for them because this is where all of this is going to happen in a way that you are really very close to the instructor, very close to the model, very close to the uh, finished product. Staring grid, sister thing, and those in the first batch of being workers, they did undergo very intense training, uh, discipline. Uh, and you see them now, they are administrators and coordinators. You don't have to teach them, you don't have to correct them. I guide them, but they are through that. But in any time they go under instruction again or correction from me, they don't reset it. It only adds up to their wisdom and understanding on how to do the Father's will and apply it to others because they also are become leaders. And no one is exempted. So if you did not pass through this course, my brothers and sisters, what is the use of you building upon the foundation because it will be burned. There's nothing left for that. That's why here in the kingdom, as I told you, the prime, most important thing is your salvation first. Not what you contribute for your talent, not what you contribute for uh, your ministry, not for what you contribute to financial revolution, not what you contribute to all those revolutions. First of all, you must have to be the one who will know that you are already saved. Already saved means when you have 
gone through the third level of spiritual growth and you have been adopted as sons and daughters, the, the, the next question will be, when do I know that I am already a son or a daughter? When you don't need correction anymore because you are the ones correcting yourself. But when you're corrected, you will appreciate it. I say, thank you. Uh, I did not know that, but thank you for telling me, advising me. That adds up to your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That is how the third level of growth people have a mental set of being leaders. That is how they react. That is how they react to, wis to instructions, to wisdom, to more of that. Uh, so that it would add up to their spiritual personality of being leaders to others, to be followed by others, and to be emulated by others. In loyalty, obedience, dedication, that is where all should be. No one is exempted. And that is where many have failed because they did not understand discipline. They did not, they misunderstood discipline, they misunderstood correction, they misunderstood reproof. Reproof. Uh, if I repro reprove you and you are on the uh, positive side of the fire, you are undergoing that, that is good for you. When you become a son and a daughter, that is the understanding that you must ask from the father. Say, Father, thank you. Thank God for uh, governors, tutors. Thank God for discipline, for reproof. Because that is molding you into becoming like him. There is only one standard, my brothers and sisters. The word of God is the standard. And the first finished product of the word of God for this ministry is the appointed son. I will not make a shortcut with you. I will not say, you're okay. Because you've contributed much. You made many, many more you made already made uh, 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 made more lumpia than others, and you have contributed to financial revolution. You're good. You're going to heaven. I will not tell you that. I will not deceive you. All of those are part of your growing up here, but if your soul is not yet on the third level of spiritual growth, you are not. You do, You are not sure. You are already a son and a daughter of the Father because you still need correction and reproof. You are still a servant. You will not inherit anything. That's where I am trying to guide everyone. And now I'll be more specific with this because I'll be interviewing all the workers all over the world. And I will be very specific in this because I want you to go with me to the finish line. Many have become full-time workers physically. They are physical, full-time miracle workers that needs to go through this. That's not the license. That is not the reason that you are already saved. You have to go through all of this. I would like to let you go there. So. They applied as full-time miracle workers, but they are not committed. They are not committed to go through the baptism of fire. So when you let them go there because no one is exempted, they draw back. They resent it. They didn't like it. In the kingdom, master this. Not your will, but the Father's will be done. If you refuse to go through the Father's will into this, you will be disqualified. Many have been disqualified. And now because the resentment was still in their heart, because they misunderstood it, look at those dissidents who came out of here. They did not understand the discipline. Just because they already are professionals, that means that they are exempted in going to heaven. I am already a lawyer. I am exempted from going to heaven. I will not go through instruction. And then you look at their spirits, you know, the, the, the most important thing is spiritual growth. Where are you in the spiritual growth? Are you in the middle? Are you one-fourth of it? Or are you three-fourth of it? Or are you 99% finished or what? 
That is what I'm looking at. When I look at you, that is what I am looking at. Where are you in a spiritual growth? Because that is where your soul depends for its salvation. If you cannot go through that, I'm sorry. You will be one of those who will say, Lord, Lord. You know, and I will say, not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter. Only those that do the will of the Father who is in heaven. What are these will? I've spoken this so many times. Galatians chapter 4, please put it back. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Now, now that you already have a, a model, you can determine your, your, your uh, time appointed with the Father. You can arrange it. You may hasten it or you delay it. It's up to you. But the time appointed of the Father will come to you. That if you did not go through that after appointed time, you're still a servant. One of these days you'll be cut off because servants will not abide in the house forever. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Elements of the world, you know, you are still uh, under bondage of the elements. What are the elements of the world? Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. And this is what made others resent this ministry because of the pride of life. And this is what made Satan fall from grace because of that pride of life. Pride of life will tell you, nobody had to teach you because you are already bright. Nobody has to teach you because you are really smart. Nobody has to teach you because you are a professional. Nobody has to teach you because you are this and you are that. When you come into the kingdom, you are reduced to zero so that you can have a new life and a new mentality and a new beginning. And that is when this is spiritual knowledge and understanding of the Father's will will come to you. Now you will understand the spiritual things of the Almighty Father. Okay, verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, fullness of the time, the fullness of teachings, the fullness of correction, the fullness of reproof has come. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. What is that law? The law of sin. The law of sin is the law of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is the devil's will implanted within us and we have inherited that kind. That is our own will. Implanted by the serpent seed within us. You'll be redeemed from that. And then you receive the adoption of sons. But before you can receive the adoptions of sons, you have to be taken out of bondage from those elements. And because now you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Now you can know, and I'll answer that question, when do I know I am already a son? When you feel in your heart that you will never backslide, that you will never go back, that you will never draw back, that you will never be offended, that you will never resent, that you will never be bitter, that you will never be like that, Although, that will stare you in the face. If you are in that state, then you can say, Abba, Father, with me. Because you are now adopted as sons and daughters. It's not the end. Verse 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, an heir of God through Christ. That is salvation. That is when you can declare yourself saved. That is where I will draw right now all the workers, full-time miracle workers. If you are not in that third level of growth, as many, many full-time workers are here, but I will now grade your spirit. If you are not in the third level of spiritual growth, you are just an apprentice here. I will not, uh, a servant is too much. So I will... Uh, 
modernize it. Instead of uh, calling you a, a servant, I will call you an apprentice. Oh, pastor, but I am already here for 20 years. Yeah, but you are still an apprentice. Move on. Move up. Prove to me right now that you can be like me. Prove to me that you will undergo this fire and you will not misunderstood it. But that will add up more to your spiritual knowledge and to the characteristics of God that is being implanted in us. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12. Look at this. This is the elements of the fire that will take you out of the bondage of the elements of the world. And you have forgotten the exhortation which is speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Huh? Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Sometimes the chastening of the Lord is coursed through angels. It is coursed sometimes through me. It is coursed sometimes through ministers, leaders, coordinators, administrators. So when the correction and the exhortation and the chastening, chastening should not always be with a rod. Sometimes you are chastened with words. What is, what should be your spiritual reaction? What should be your spiritual response to that? Do not despise it. Do not faint. Sa Bisaya, di ka maluya. Di ka malain. Do not despise it. I have heard some, uh, the workers were corrected by Brother Marlon. I heard after Brother Marlon corrected this new worker, this worker said after Marlon, you know, went away, he said, Kining Marlon na ni? That's a disrespect. That is despising the chastening. He correct siya kay, there was an imburnal there, it's all mabaho, and he was supposed to be the more mature there, passing by always and, you know, smelling this uh, bad smell coming from this uh, hole. And Marlon told him, you are supposed to be the one to know this because you are here every day and many workers, you, you should have gathered them and said, let us, you know, solve this problem because it's so mabaho, it's so smelly. And Marlon just told them, you know, do your responsibility. You are responsible. After na taliko si Marlon, kining Marlon na ni. Because that servant slave mentality, victim kanunay kada tudluan. Do not do that. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuke of him. Faint. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he received. That is the right mentality. That is the correct response. That is the correct understanding. When you are here, doing the will of the Father, everything that happens to you is Father's will. Course through many circumstances in your life, you have to thank God for it. Because if you don't, you despise it, you're despising God. Who called you and who will refine you and who will purify you and who will make you like a fine diamond? so that you can be displayed and you can be valuable and you can be precious in His sight. 
Look at that. That is the right understanding. Oh, the Lord loves me. So if you know that when you're corrected, that is the sign that the Lord loves you. When you are being scourged, not automatically with, you know, whips, but words. Words can scourge you. Oh, that is the right understanding. Thank God for it. If I were that worker, I would say, Brother Marlon, thank you for reminding me. Thank you because I missed that. Thank you for the understanding and the awareness. Next time I will be more aware of it. So you thank God and he only used Brother Marlon for that as a minister. Verse uh, 7. If you endure chastening, that is the cuts for us Filipino workers and many others. If you endure, there is an if. Why is there an if? Because many will not be able to endure chastening. To them, it is pagdaog-daog. To them, it is hurting their pride. To them, it is, they misunderstood it exactly. To them, it is like that. Hmm. Sobra na ni. Puno na ko. Di na ko maahimuan ni. Puno na nga kong utok. That is a misunderstanding of the Father's chastening. That is why there is an if you endure chastening. Why is it there is an if? Because many will misunderstand it. If you endure, trust Why endure? Because many are not able to endure. If you endure chastening, you go through. Who is your mother? I am your mother. God dealeth with you as with sons. So he looks at you like you are already there on the third level of God as a son. For what a son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Those that do not undergo that, that's why they are monsters of the world. But if you be without chastisement, look at this, wherefore all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Bastards means he does not care of you. He does not care about you. But when you are chastised and you endure it, that is the sign that the Father is dealing with you as a son. For there is no father that will not do that. And it says that, but if you are without chastisement, you are fatherless. Mm. You are bastards. You have no father. Because the father, the correction always comes from the father. Verse 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? Now, sometimes this verse do not resonate with the new generation today. Because today, the new generations are different from the generations where I grew up. In my growing up in the 50s, chastisement, rod, palo, it's all normal. There's no law that will say child abuse, child abuse. Mm. Now, you cannot even say something to a child. You cannot even corrupt a child. You cannot even make palo a little to the child because it's child abuse. And because of that, the child grew up monsters. What did they do? Parents abuse. They abuse their parents. They abuse the authority. They have no respect to authority. They have no respect to elders. In our time, in our time of growing up in the 50s, if you speak disrespectfully to someone who is older than you, you will receive punishments. In our family, if you disrespect the one that is older than you, you will be punished, not only by the father or mother, even that one that is older than you. That is the discipline before. Now, I hate it because I don't see respect from the younger ones to the older. 
even at the age level of what I'm talking about. But I will impose that in the kingdom, especially among workers. Do not disrespect those that are older than you in age, especially if that is one, the, the one that is older than you is a leader. Don't ever, ever disrespect a leader, especially if that leader is older than you in your biological age. I will not allow it. I will not tolerate it. That is one of the discipline I would like to impose in the kingdom nation. And that is the Father's will. And that is how I grew up. That's why I have respect to authority. That's why I have res uh, respect to leaders, especially leaders who are doing good. See that? Furthermore, we have fathers who have corrected us. Correction is good when the correction is coming from the Almighty Father. When you are here, that correction is to make you, enhance you, refine you, purify you into becoming a leader that must be emulated when you are declared as sons and daughters engaged in the Father's work. He said, for verily, for a few days, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. See that? Our, our, our earthly fathers talking about our earthly fathers. If you have earthly fathers that are doing that. Now I don't see that. I don't know about this laws uh, that uh, were made that we, you cannot even speak uh, a form of uh, a form of uh, like uh, a word of reproof to a child and there's a law that says that child abuse or something like that. Well, I, I respect those laws because there are parents who are really abusing their ch children or many other people. But, you know, the discipline of our society, that's why our society today is like this, the discipline must be imposed in the family first. And if there is a government that will say the failure of the children in society is the failure of the family or the parents in the home. There should be a law like that. We should blame the parents for the failure of disciplining their children. And they created monsters. Now there is a law that uh, incorporates the, uh, the right of a child by the government. And now it should be the government to impose discipline to these children because they took that authority from the parents. They should be the one to discipline these children. But they failed to do that. Many governments failed to do that. So many ended up as juvenile delinquents. Furthermore, there are laws today that uh, exonerate these children up to 15 years old when they commit crime as if they did not commit anything. You know, I am so, I am so sick about all of this because in my growing up, even if you speak ill, to someone older than you. You know there's a punishment. That is how I grew up, conservatively. Now, look at the crime that's happening. Look at the crime perpetrated by children. Look at the guns. Now they come to the kingdom and they will find this kind of discipline and I am living in the modern internet age where all of this is tolerated it's like swimming against the current. But I don't care because this is my ministry. I will impose it. I am the imposer of the will of the Almighty Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, here on this earth today. Because those that used these words before never did that. They were afraid. Because Jesus Christ is not here to impose his words. Because if Jesus Christ is here, he will impose all of this to us. He will teach all of this to us. But because he's not here, they just use his name. Oh, they just, you know, lighten his words. And they just adulterated it. And they said, this is coming from Jesus Christ. This is coming from, because they have Jesus Christ's name over and above them. But it's a sorry and sad state of doing that. That's why Jesus Christ, 
our Almighty Father produced an appointed son who is loyal to impose his will here on this earth today by his words. And I'll be faithful in doing that. Look at that. For they were for a few days chasing us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we may that we might be partakers of his holiness. But he for our profit, our Almighty Father, for our profit, it is not for our loss. It is not to hurt us. It is not to, because the Filipinos are very sensitive with their feelings. All they have left, uh, as one Filipino has said, all that is left in me is my pride. I have no more properties. I have no more. I am under con uh, conquest. <laughs> I am a victim. All that is left is me, is my pride. If you'll take my pride away, what will be left of me? You know, but that is false pride. When you come into the kingdom, that's false pride. Take away that pride. Be a child, a child of the Almighty Father. Go under this. Receive the instruction and reproof and chastening and correction and this is the right understanding. This is for your own profit. Why? That we may be partakers of His holiness. That is the end game of correction, reproof, discipline. That we might be partakers of His holiness, of His wisdom, of His understanding, of His knowledge. And I am your model. I am here. And you are set up against this standard, a model that the Father has given for each one of you. That's why I'm here. If I do not approve of you now, according to the standard set up by the Almighty Father, and I say you are not yet adopted as sons and daughters because I am the one that is going to measure that. I am the measurement and standard of the Father. That's why when he said me, I will use you as the standard of my salvation, righteousness, and my judgment. I know. Your name will not be written in the book of life if you did not go through that. That's why there should be perfection of our characteristics so that we might be partakers of His holiness. And that is when we will win. I won. You will win the battle between spirituality and carnality. Because spiritual, uh, carnality is not only about the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. It's most specifically the pride of life. Many have been able to overcome the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. But the pride of life, this is the hardest that they can forego. But this is going to be your enemy. Pride of life is one of them. Pride of who you are. Pride of mind. Pride of, I don't know what kind of pride he implanted within us, which is called ego. Oh. In the world, you can use that, but not in the kingdom. In the kingdom, you will have a new pride. What is that? It is not the pride of life. It is you are proud to obey and submit and be humble. You will be proud to obey, submit, and humble, and be obedient, loyal, dedicated, committed to do the Father's will. That is, that is what you should be proud of in the kingdom. So if you continue defending yourself, uh, well, somebody asked me, how do I know, Pastor, that I have the pride of life when I am here in the kingdom? When you continue to defend yourself, be defensive when it comes to yourself, you have the pride of life. The more you defend yourself, the more you justify yourself, the more you do that. You are no different than the Pharisees. They are self-righteous. Do not do that. Do not defend yourself. Your, 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 yourself is the issue here. Do not do that. It should be the Father who should defend you. You know, when it comes to our uh, being children, sons and daughters in the community 
of the kingdom nation here in the kingdom. All of these corrections, instructions, they are just normal, normal to us. So when you're corrected, don't defend yourself. Don't be self-righteous. Let the righteousness of the Father come. Let the righteousness of the Father be the one to cover you with his righteousness. So you'll not be self-righteous. Don't be defensive on yourself. But how do I know, Pastor, that I'm already spiritual or I have the, the pride that you are telling me about the new pride of proud to be humble, proud to be obedient? I'll tell you how. When you are the issue and yourself is involved in an issue, you will always extol the word of God. And you will always say, you know, this is not what Pastor, our appointed son said. This is not what the word of God said. Our response should be always according to the word of God. According to the word of God, when I am persecuted, I have to humble myself. According to the word of God, we have to love one another. According to the word of God that was taught to us by the appointed son, we must love our enemy. And I am not even your enemy. We are brothers and sisters. Oh. According to the word of God in Hebrews chapter 12, when I am corrected, I will give reverence to those that have corrected me. According to the word of God, that is when you are spiritual. When you always quote the word of God, that will be your response to any situation that arises in your life. Whether you are the issue or others are the issue, the word of God should always be in the middle, extolled and exalted in all of our relationships. The answer should always be the word of God. What did the word of God say? You are corrected. What did the word of God say? What is your response when you are disciplined? What is your response? You will resent. You will become a rebel like the dissidents that went out of here. And then, you know, you will use what you have to revenge. Oh, that is Satan, Lucifer, the devil. That is the pride of Satan, Lucifer, the devil. That is not where we are going. The trajectory the direction of this ministry is to become sons and daughters. And when you are there, finally, you will win the battle of carnality. Spirituality versus carnality. Because to be carnal is not only to be pull up the lust of the flesh or lust of the eyes. It is also to be pull of the pride of life. What kind of life? The life that you have, the normal, the physical life that you have. It's one of us. We have our own pride that was implanted within us. That is included in this world, Deva. Right? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. Talking about pride, nobody can uh, be higher than my pride. <laughs> I inherited that from being a Kapampangan. If the Longos are full of pride, full of hanging, the Kapampangans are double. Do not touch my pride. And I, but, you know, at a young age, my pride was already shattered because I was taught obedience at a very young age that I have to submit, that I have to be there. Now, the situation comes, it's always according to the Father's will. I'm accused here, I'm accused there. What does the word of God say? Matthew chapter 5 is my response. Blessed are you when men shall persecute you. I love the word of God. So I don't resent the persecutions. <laughs> in fact, I am saying, I am the fulfillment of that. Mm. When somebody corrects you, because you need correction, you need discipline, what will you say? Hebrews chapter 12. And many other more verses there. Then you become spiritual. 
But when you defend yourself that you are right and you are wrong, you know, and then this one says, I am right, you are wrong, I am wrong, you are right. Both of you are carnal. Because no one is right here but the word of God. And then set your standard against the sun. What will the sun do? What will the appointed sun do? In this situation where you are in, what will he do? I am the father of correction here. I am the father of discipline. I am the father of reproof. That's my ministry. That others in the churches are very afraid to do. Or else they will lose members. Because they are only after membership to give them the resources of money to let them live. Because it's just a profession to them. To me, it's not. It is salvation first. Anything you do and contribute into the kingdom is nothing if you are not saved. And by being here, it's not a guarantee that you are saved. You are only physically present, but I will grade your spirit. If you are still full of resentment, full of the pride of life, you are still very defensive of yourself, you have this defense mechanism that the fire cannot penetrate you, you're not going to heaven. You are not on your way there. Why I know that? Because I myself was the one who first went there in order to be adopted as a son. My fire is more intense than yours. And then the one that came after me, Ingrid Thing, these two, their fire is more intense than any of you. But you don't know that because they don't, I will let them testify sometime to you what kind of fire. Many, you know, look at Sister Ingrid or Sister Ting and uh, they are envious of their position and their, and their uh, very uh, closeness to me. But they did not know how these people have undergone the fire. It's good for all of those workers that came here because the Father is now is full of compassion and tolerance. But the time of tolerance that the Father winked at is over. That's why now, after all of these uh, years in 2020, the Father is gradually going to let you see and impose the right system and the right uh, way spiritually because I will be interviewing each one of you all over the world and I'll be grading you and I'll be saying to you this is first and foremost my ministry because I would fail if all of you for example 10,000 workers and only 50 are saved because only 50 have gone through the fire successfully? What about the 9,950? They are all servants. They are not going to the place where they will inherit everything because they were not, they did fail to become sons and daughters of the Almighty Father. I don't want you to miss that. That's why I will lay down the standard very clearly to all of you. And I will ask you specifically these things. I'll ask each one of your workers specifically these things. And I will ask you, makaya ni ni? Makaya ni Because many have applied as full-time miracle workers without the determination to finish. They applied as full-time miracle workers, but they are not committed. So the time of the tolerance God permitted is over. Now I will ask every one of you specifically, are you determined to finish? Are you determined to go through this? If not, I will not waste my resources on you. You know why? 
because I have wasted so many resources for those people who were, who declared, who applied as full-time, and I took for granted their application of being full-time, assuming that they will become like me and that they are committed and dedicated to do the Father's will, only to find out they are not. They only made a dedication, uh, they only made an application, and we accepted them. But me, I'm very tolerant. I'm very uh, compassionate. And I assume that your decision is like mine when I decided to follow him. It is no turning back. I was mistaken there, but the father tolerated that because that is the time of his tolerance. To let you see how his compassion and goodness is present in this world today, even to you. But the time and tolerance that the Father winked at is over. I will ask each one of you. I will not waste resources right now. Because if you cannot do it, I will tell you, you have to quit. Go out. I will not waste any resources on you. You know why? Look at those that I've wasted resources from the kingdom. And we assume that they would become like me, like us in, in obedience, in commitment and dedication. Only to find out they are not committed. They only use the kingdom. They only use me and they only use the resources of the kingdom for their own self-benefit. But when they were told to go through the fire of correction and reproof, they went out. Subibat. Kumalis. Manon. Hindi pala kaya. Hindi pala yun ang pakay nila. So it's not really salvation that they are after. They are only after the blessings of the Father. And they thought that by being here, they are already in heaven. Uh, I'm sorry to tell you it's not. That is not the license for you to be in heaven just because you are here. You have to undergo this so that I can be assured of your salvation, that I did not fail you. Because when we face each other in judgment, and I did not impose this, then I will be answering for your soul. Look at those resources that we have invested in those. For example, the dissidents that came out of here. But they are not really interested. They are not really determined to finish. They don't even believe it. But they are here. They camouflage themselves. They, they pretended to be just like us. But they are not like us. They are not like me. I'll tell you. You know, you have to decide. But that is what the Word of God says in building a tower. Sit down first. <laughs> I will sit down with you now. Sit down first. If you have enough funds, funds of obedience, funds of loyalty and humility, to be able to finish the tower until you reach the third level of spiritual growth to become sons and daughters. Then you will be finished and you will be like me. No more backsliding, no more offenses. You cannot be offended by anything. No more of that. We will stand tall. We will be used of the Almighty Father to propagate the Word of God. We will be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and we will propagate and replicate ourselves into so many that all will become like us, sons and daughters. That is the trajectory. That is the main game. That is the end game. That is the result of this ministry that I will be imposing. I will have to produce finished products. But I will not be unfair to all of you because I'll be asking you, kaya ni mo ni? Kaya ni mo ni? Kung di ni mo makaya, ang uman, di ka kaya. They are here. But they wanted to... So, go. When you build a tower, sit down first. Will I be able to finish? I, am I determined like, Pastor, when you're determined, you, you have cut off everything. You know, you don't surrender. I will not accept those who in the middle will surrender. I will specifically ask you that. If your answer is yes, 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 you have to do that. Because if you will not do that, 
I'll face you and I'll say, you are a liar. Pabayaron ta ka. <laughs> that is how serious I am. Mao na ako mo commit ko, hindi commit na ako, diligyo ko mo back out sa akong commitment. Then I assume that everyone that committed are like that. Dili di ay pares ako. Dili di ay determinado mo tiwas. Oh. Kaduga yan, nagawas, nandaot pa. Anawa na. Because they don't understand. They misunderstood. They don't want to go through it. But that is the only way. Makipot ang daan. Ang pinto. Yeah. For which of you intending to build a tower, see that down first counted the cost, whether he had sufficient to finish it. Do you have sufficient humility to finish it? Do you have sufficient obedience to finish it? Are you determined? Ako. That's why I have this word, say. My heart is fixed, mind made up. I will follow the Father's will no matter what. If I die here, I die now. <laughs> because that is how committed I am. I'm willing to die for my decision and commitment and determination to finish. If I died in Tamayo, so be it. No one knows me, but I finished the, the race. I don't even know that I will be there for five years. Oh. Lest happily after he had laid the foundation, he's able to finish that. Behold, everyone mocked him. Tunga tunga, sibat. Six years, na tunga lang balay, sibat. Never able to come to that place where there is no more backsliding. On the third level of growth, as soon as tung tung ka dito. No more backsliding. Di na ka ma-offend. The fruits of the Spirit will be there. Love, peace, joy, goodness, meekness, faith. You see that in me, di ba? I am your model. When I say I am your model, I will have to wait for you there and say, welcome. <laughs> oh, that is when the Father can trust you. Because, first of all, you know you are saved. You know you have become a son and a daughter. You know you will inherit heaven before you can teach others. But pastor, I'm contributing here. I'm an engineer. I have built the, the, the roof of the kingdom. Not all that say unto me, I build the roof of the kingdom will go to heaven. Only those that will follow. But pastor, I'm six years here. If I will uh, count the lumpia that I made, Siguro it will fill this room. I sacrificed. What is your grade in the spirit? That is how you build your tower. 50%? Sorry. It's not finished. You have to remain. You have to be out. Don't let that happen to you saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. The end game here is, you have to finish. The finishing line is when you reach the third level. No more backsliding. Whatever happens, even if somebody kills you for your faith, no more of that victim mentality. No more of that resentment, bitterness because of correction. That is so grossly immature in the kingdom. It is never accepted. It will never be tolerated in the kingdom. That is out here. All those that go to heaven, look at Paul. Did he resent being persecuted? Oh, the word of God says, if you suffer for doing the will of the Father and calls you, if you suffer for that, the grace of God is upon you. Many would suffer for the, the good. Some will suffer for the good that they are doing, you know, uh, for the evil that they do. But if you suffer for the good that you are doing, blessed are you because the grace of God is upon you. And then another parable is the parable of the, uh, the, the king's war. Sit down first. Are you able to battle like this, uh, battle between spirituality and carnality? Sit down. Uh, 
What are the resources of the devil here in this battle? All of it. Beer high. Will I be able to finish? I will finish it. Oh. Look at those accusations against me about carnality. That's why I am here. In the likeness of sinful flesh that I might condemn sin in the flesh. I condemn here the sins of the flesh. What are the sins of the flesh? Incarnality, fornication, adultery, pornography, everything that concerns that. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, internet, that is the lust of the eye. You cannot even part from it for a few seconds. Everything is there. You know, it begins with the lust of the eyes, lust of the eyes. And then this pride of life, proud of yourself, always defend yourself. No one is defending the word of God. No one is defending the ways of God. No one is defending the word of God. Many are defenders of the throne of the appointed son, throne of righteousness. They are not defending me personally. They are defending me spiritually. That's why I can read that on the internet. Defenders of the throne. They are always quoting the word of God, word of God. Defenders of the kingdom nation's uh, ministry of the appointed son. I like that so much. When everybody is exalting, extolling the word of God, the answer to every situation is always quoted in the word of God. I like that so much. Our self is no longer the issue. The issue is, are you following the word of God? In this issue that we have, is the word of God being followed? That is what makes me so happy and satisfied with the work that the Father has entrusted me to do. Praise the Father. So that is now the trajectory, my brothers and sisters. For all of those that will become full-time, you want to become full-time. Oh, all of those that are now full-time, I will review everything. And I will lay down to you this path that you don't delay in going through that so that many finished product will be delivered to the Almighty Father's will. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you so that you may go, bear fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. The fruit that will remain are those that will be on the third level of spiritual growth. Have undergone the fire, positive fire of correction, reproof, discipline, and instruction, and the negative fire of persecution, accusation, every trial and temptation coming from that. All of this will meet you in the middle. But if you are desirous and sincere and determined through your freedom of choice, the Father will guide you to the end. May the Father bless all of you, brothers and sisters. I'll be coming back after this break.